This is the DF-83. It's the big brother, or sister, to the ever-popular quote-unquote niche killer DF-64 line. It's a grinder that looks identical to the DF-64, with some elements of the DF-64P, but scaled up to a much larger size. And right now, it's my favorite brew grinder. Heck, it might even be my favorite grinder all around, we'll just have to see how the orbit compares in the full review. Hey, it's Chris and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm reviewing the DF83, which for full disclosure was sent to me by Espresso Outlet, but this video is not sponsored and no money exchanged hands, and all thoughts and opinions are my own. This channel is supported by those of you who have joined as a channel member and use my affiliate links in the description. Do also consider dropping a like and subscribing if you enjoy this content. Okay, so this is a grinder that I was super interested in trying out because I haven't had a lot of experience with burrs beyond something like the traditional 64 millimeter size that you see a lot in grinders like the DF64, the Legon P64, many Eureka models, even the fellow O Gen 2, etc, etc. And right away, I'm gonna call this thing a clarity beast. Now, I can only imagine what something like a 98 millimeter burst set on something like a Cafetec or a Legon P100 might be like, and having used a grinder like this, my interest is now peaked for one of those grinders. But before getting into that, let's talk about the build quality. The build here is unsurprisingly very similar to the DF64 and 64P. It's an extremely dense grinder and it is very, very heavy. The material on the outside is very similar to the 64P with a nice matte black even finish, which you all know I love as it perfectly suits my coffee bar. It also has the same improvements that the 64P has over the 64 regular, like better aka less retention, a thicker base, wooden accents, but unfortunately does have the same downsides like a side placement button and cable, which I am not a fan of. Now the DF83, unlike the 64P, uses the same adjustment mechanism on the original 64, which I actually prefer, and probably also because it's not solely espresso focused like the P is. The build on this grinder is great all around, but I wish they would just update some small details here and there, like the little rubber grips for the dosing cup, which work, but they're not fantastic because they do slip off and they do pick up coffee grounds pretty quickly. So, you know, a different design would definitely have been welcomed here. I do also wish they had some kind of indicator built into the ring itself, rather than using this add-on that almost feels like an afterthought, though I am still glad it exists. The grinder does come with some accessories, including bellows right here, and a little chamber for larger grind doses, but I haven't had the need to use that just yet. Now, similar to the DF64P, the grinder does jump a little when turning it on. But not nearly as much, and that's probably just because due to its sheer massive weight. Now, my experience using this grinder has been just about the same as the DF64, so if you are familiar with that, then it's not very much different to talk about, but it is definitely improved in some ways, like again, less retention and a little bit better when it comes to chaffing. I did still see a minor improvement using a little RDT spray ahead of grinding to prevent static. However, the retention here is pretty great and the bellows makes it just a little bit better. I've been able to get out pretty much what I've put in, maybe within a 0.2 to 0.3 gram-ish, um, difference or variation within each dose. And this thing also grinds fast. With those huge burrs, I'm able to grind through 18 grams of espresso doses in under 10 seconds, and filter brewing doses in even less. Now this thing is going to be a little bit louder than something like the Niche because it has a much higher RPM, but because it's so quick, I don't find it all that disturbing. So, you know, it's got some trade-offs, but sound is really not an issue, at least not compared to something like the Goat Story Arco, which sounded like an absolute blender. Okay, so going to some of the actual tasting. For filter, I've had brews with clarity I've never tasted at home from any other grinder. It really brings out fruit-forward tasting notes in my brews. And depending on the method, I've had some really light-bodied, almost tea-like textures, which have been really enjoyable. Now personally, in the past I have preferred like a richer body and mouthfeel, and I've been able to achieve that with using a cloth filter to retain the body while still achieving the great clarity. One of my most memorable brews of coffee in the past year has been some beans from Say Coffee, ground on the DF83, and brewed with a 5 minute steep in the Hario Switch, and it was an absolutely delicious fruity cup with no astringency and no harsh acidity at all. And now when it comes to something like espresso, this grinder has again been awesome. Now initially I was fully expecting this to be a very light bodied, ultra clarity shot profile, but surprisingly it's retained a lot of gooey textured full bodied shots. With the beans I've been using for the past couple weeks, I've been getting huge chocolatey and caramelly tasting notes that I have paired beautifully with milk. In my opinion, if you are a milky drink fan like myself, this might be the ultimate milky drink grinder. While still retaining a lot of the great qualities of the beans paired with it, the texture and aromatic notes still pull through beautifully even when blended with milk. And coming from something like the niche with conical burrs, the huge 83mm flatbread grinders is a stark contrast, and an enjoyable one at that. At its price point, in my opinion, 
this is probably going to be the best point of contrast to something like a niche. So to wrap up my summary of the DF83, it's a really, really good grinder. Now I'm not great at doing grinder reviews and getting into the nitty gritty, but for the average home user, I think you're really going to love this grinder. Personally, I think it's pretty competitive for what it is and what it offers at its price point of just about $700. And in my opinion, because it's so starkly different from anything else I've tried, it's been just super enjoyable to test and use. In my opinion, this is the grinder to beat in 2023, at least for now, at its relatively low $700 price point. Now, because I love this grinder so much, I'm definitely going to be trying out some other burrs in the future, but for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to drop a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.